Oh, sh I'm too far from the stop sign again. Oopsie. Wait, how do I open the door? So you're in a brand new car, huh? New car smell. Unlike most cars, Teslas are a little different. For instance, when you let your foot off of the accelerator, instead of the car cruising to a stop using the momentum, the Tesla immediately stops using the regenerative braking from the motors. There are so many quirks and features of the Tesla. So in today's video, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to drive a Tesla. What is up guys? It's Chris with Everyday Chris and welcome back to my channel. The number one place for Tesla, tech, and everyday life. If you guys are new here, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. And as always, like the video if you love Tesla. First things first, let's talk about charging. If you have a home charger or even a supercharger, charging the Tesla is super easy with the press of a button. Once you're near the charger, just press the button and the charge port will open automatically, allowing you to plug the car in. You'll see a white Tesla icon, meaning it's ready to charge. A blue Tesla icon means that the Tesla is communicating with the charger and it's about to charge. And at superchargers, I've seen the blue icon blink for a minute or so, but eventually it does start charging. I was actually on a road trip and I saw a lady move her car multiple times because she said the icon kept flashing blue and wasn't charging. Once the Tesla symbol turns green, that means it's charging. If the icon is an amber color, that means the connector isn't plugged in all the way. And if it's red, then there's a problem with the charger or the charge port. When you remove the charger and walk away from the charge port, it automatically closes the lid. You can also manually open and close the charge port if the car is unlocked. Simply press on the charge port lid to open and close it. And that's the basics of charging. Now charging can go into so much more detail with supercharging and all that stuff but I'll do a separate video on that another time. I get a lot of questions when friends come to sit in my car. How in the F do you open the door handles? It's actually really easy. The big part is where your thumb goes. Then it pops open and you pull. Now, if you don't have a thumb, I suppose you can do the old middle finger, index finger pull trick. And I'm sure that'll still work for you. When you finally do make it into the Tesla, how do you get out of the car? There isn't a door handle. Wait. How do I open the door? Where's the door handle? It's as simple as pressing this button. Huh. So that's how you open the door. And if that doesn't work, the driver and passenger side has an actual handle located here where you can open the car door. However, I don't recommend doing it all the time as it can damage the door and damage the trim. So now we got the basics like getting in your Tesla out of the way. How do we start the car? First off at delivery, you're given two key cards. These key cards are your key. I recommend keeping a key card with you at all times because there have been times where the Bluetooth wouldn't work on my phone, therefore not letting me in the car. However, that rarely happens. If you really are scared though, you can actually purchase a key fob just like a normal car. To open the car, place the key on the pillar under the camera, like the image shows on the card. Then, to start the car, simply place it behind the cup holders in that little area, and that's it. You don't have to keep the key card there, it's just meant to start the car. So now you got the key card out of the way, how do you use your phone to start the car? And that's super simple as well. Simply press the locks icon, and then press the plus sign to add a phone as a key. Up at the top, you can click on a driver profile. What's so cool about the driver profiles is it literally syncs everything to that user. 90% of the stuff syncs to each driver profile. For instance, if a person likes to drive on chill mode, or if they like their steering wheel super comfortable and loose, even their cruise control distance is synced to every user. You can also enable easy entry depending on the profile. An easy entry pretty much makes it easier for big people like me to get into the car. So if the Tesla senses my phone, it will automatically switch to the easy entry profile so I can easily get in the car. However, if the wife goes in, she has it off and it goes to her profile. And if you change any sort of setting when you're driving, such as the seat or the steering wheel or mirrors, a notification pops up asking you to save that profile. Another awesome feature is if you have multiple people in the car with the phone key, say you and your spouse, 
You can also prioritize which phone the car should default to. Now I'll be doing a separate video on the Tesla app and all of its features. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that video. Okay, so now you got the phone set up. Let's start driving, baby. Now in the Tesla, there is no switch or button. The second your key is connected and you open the door, the car is on. When you press the foot on the brake, the profile engages and adjusts to your driver profile. Before we start driving, you have to adjust all these settings in the menu. However, there's so many settings to go through, I'm gonna go ahead and make another video on that later. Now to put the car in drive, you put your foot on the brake and use the right driving stock and go all the way down. To put it in neutral, push it a little bit up. And to go into reverse, you just go up all the way. The cool thing about Tesla is because there are no physical gears, you can be in reverse and go into drive without having to brake and come to a complete stop. Now to put the car in park, simply press the gray button on the right stop. Usually the parking brake is applied automatically. However, if it doesn't, simply hold the gray button for two seconds and then it will enable. Now your gear indicators are right on the left side in small letters, as well as a big letter. And then from there, we drive. In a normal car, when you let the foot off the accelerator, the car kind of coasts to a stop slowly. However, in a Tesla, the second you let your foot off the accelerator, the car immediately starts to brake using the regenerative braking. That means even if you're going down a steep hill, you still have to press the accelerator, which seems super weird. Not only that, by default, when you slow down, the Tesla holds the car in position when it stops, unlike gas cars, which rolls forward. This is why when you first drive a Tesla, Change the setting from hold to creep. That way you can get more used to driving with the regenerative braking. And don't even use the roll function as the car will roll forward if there is only momentum. Once you get used to it, in order to fully utilize one pedal driving, make sure to enable the hold feature as it just makes life so easy. When you do have the hold feature enabled and the car slows down, you'll see a hold icon letting you know that the car is stopped. And if somehow you open the car door, the car will automatically go into park as a safety feature. Now here's where you kind of have to learn how to drive as if you were a young 16 year old getting your learner's permit for the first time. In the past, you were able to control the amount of regenerative braking so the car can coast like a normal car. However, now they disabled that feature. I understand why Tesla would do this to maximize the regenerative braking so that you can get the most out of your Tesla. In order to get the hang of driving, I recommend finding a stop sign you could practice with. When you have your foot on the accelerator, you go forward, however, the second you completely remove your foot off the accelerator, you slow down significantly and brake with regenerative braking. If you look on the screen, you'll actually see in real time your brake lights turning on, depending how, how sudden you remove your foot. So what really worked for me was feathering the accelerator. Make sure the heel of your foot is flat on the floor. I actually put my foot on the right side so that it kind of supports my foot to make feathering easier. The accelerator has a good amount of resistance to it unlike other cars. So when you slowly start to remove your foot, you'll notice the resistance from the pedal and you'll notice the car slowing down. Eventually, the more you remove your foot off of the accelerator, the more the car slows down. It takes some time getting used to because the first time I'd be like five feet away from a stop sign. So I ended up having to accelerate to get closer. I'm sure I look like a complete doofus, but who cares? Another visualization that will help you is the bar on the top of the speedometer. When you accelerate, the bar turns black, and this means you're using energy. When you slowly let your foot off the accelerator, you'll notice the black bar decreases and a new green bar on the left appears. This means you're using the regenerative braking, therefore slowing you down. For us having a Tesla, that was the hardest part, driving the car. There were so many times I was super nauseous at the end of my trip, because I would accelerate too quickly and then brake too quickly. Now, when you're driving, on the left stock is your turn signal. If you lightly go up or down halfway, it does three ticks and then stops. If you fully push up or down, the signal light stays on. And to turn it off, simply go up or down the way you went before. Now, Tesla loves to do everything on auto mode. Their wiper blades are actually pretty good on auto. It actually uses the cameras to see if there's rain, unlike other cars which use sensors. To manually engage the wiper blades, however, simply press the gray button once. Once you do that, the wiper blade menu automatically pops up, allowing you to change the speed or turn off the auto wiper blades. And you'll know if the wiper blades are on auto when it's highlighted in blue. To engage the wiper fluid, press that gray button all the way down. If you haven't realized it already, Tesla tries to make everything super easy for the driver, including the windshield wipers as well as the headlights and even braking. 
and for the most part, it works really well. The headlights do a great job of turning on by themselves and turning on immediately when it gets dark, like going into a garage or under a bridge. On the screen, you'll know the headlights are on with these icons. This means the headlights are on. This means the fog lights are on. And this means that the auto high beams are on. If you ever need to turn the headlights on or off manually, however, simply click the car in the menu at the bottom, click quick controls, and you can manually enable the headlights and fog lights. And for more options, go to the lights menu to enable the auto high beams. This must be enabled for newer Tesla Vision vehicles, as in order for the autopilot to work, the auto high beams have to be on. However, in order to enable the high beams, you have to manually push on the left stock away from you until you see the little A with the high beam icon in gray. See, that was pretty easy. So now you got the hang of driving the car. Here's some stuff to pay attention to while you're driving. The one thing I wish Tesla had was a 360 degree panoramic view monitor. However, the good thing is that the display shows you everything going on in real time. It knows if a vehicle is a sedan or a van or a truck. It knows if there are people, if there are cyclists, and it shows you it on the screen. You can also rotate the display with your fingers and zoom in and out. It also shows you your car driving in real time and is super accurate. For instance, if you're closer to the right side of the lanes, it shows you on the display. It even shows you the speed signs and arrows on the road. If you have the full self-driving package, it also gives you signal lights and informs you if the light turns green. Overall, it's a super awesome feature. While you're driving, you can also keep the rear and side cameras on all the time. However, I did find it a little distracting. Hopefully in a software update, they can do what Honda does and turn on the side that you're turning so you can see if anyone is in your blind spot. When you're driving or parking, you'll notice these little half circles everywhere. These circles tell you how close or far away you are from an object. Especially when you're at low speeds and you're going into say, a driveway, it will tell you down to the inches of how close you are to something. Even in the newer Raiderless Teslas, they do a great job of determining the distance in the three and the Y. While you're driving, you can customize options by using the two scroll wheels. However, before we get into that, we have to go over something that's super important. Sometimes, even while you're driving, the screen can freeze or glitch out. It can even freeze if you're just chilling in the car. To restart the screen, it's super simple. While you're driving, hold down both steering wheel buttons for a solid 15 seconds until the screen turns black. Then after around a minute or so, the screen will turn back on and that's pretty much it and everything does work during that time. Okay, so I'm gonna try to do the autopilot and then restart the screen when autopilot is engaged. So now it's on, so let's try. So it still works. So autopilot still works even though the screen's off. Let's see if it breaks. Broke by itself. We're gonna move over. You have two scroll wheels that can scroll up or down rapidly, as well as left and right. On the left side, it controls the volume of your music. I also learned that while navigation is talking to you, it controls the volume of the navigation. On the right side, if you hold the button, it brings up the voice assistant, which is very good. It's surprising what the voice assistant can or can't do. When in doubt, just try it out and see what happens. You can submit a bug report, tell it to go to Costco, or even open the butthole, which is the charge port. This is also where you control the cruise control speed, as well as the distance. Scroll slowly to increase the speed by one, and you can scroll fast to increase it by five. And you can control the distance by going left and right. And again, I'm gonna go into this into much further detail in my autopilot video. While you're driving, when you change lanes, the animation changes allowing you more vision around you. However, one thing I wish Tesla implemented was a blind spot monitoring system, similar to say, Mercedes. It does let you know if a car is in your blind spot by displaying the car in red. And the car will take evasive maneuvers if you keep trying to go in. However, most people tend to look at which lane they're going to and don't really look at the center screen. Another feature I wish Tesla had, which is a no-brainer, is rear cross traffic alert. We even had it in our Prius. Pretty much if you're backing out and it senses a car or someone walking, the car will beep letting you know something's behind you. 
However, the Tesla doesn't do this, but the cameras do a great job of seeing what's around you. So I have to talk about this next part, because you pay $60,000 for your Tesla, so having a garage door opener like a Homelink is a no-brainer, right? Nope. With Tesla, the only way to open your garage door is to bring your actual garage remote in your car or purchase the upgraded Homelink kit for $325. It doesn't have those buttons that other cars have on the rear view mirror. And not only that, Tesla doesn't have a center organization tray, so there's nowhere to put my garage opener. So the one thing you do need to hold your handy dandy garage door remote control is an organization tray. Now, Tesla doesn't come with organization trays. It's just two giant holes in the car. And Tesla does sell organization trays on their website and they're pretty decent, it's average. I mean, there's two holes here for the middle area where your elbow goes. And this one is a big, nice compartment where you can hold like two sunglasses and a couple other things. However, they're not the best. Joe Wow and Basner reached out to me and gave me samples of their products. And honestly, it's awesome. Baster's organization tray is awesome because it not only has compartments for coins as well as other nifty gadgets that you have in your car, it also has a little hole in it where you can put a adapter or if you have a cigarette outlet you want to plug in and that is super awesome and great attention to detail. Here, boom, Tesla has two big holes. So here's the organization tray, it's awesome. It has different compartments, it's just as deep as the Tesla one. It even fits perfectly. It has little compartments for coins if you have anything or whatever you have. And it just fits so perfectly. And I love how there's a hole here where you can place your cigarette outlet if you have to charge something, you have a phone you wanna charge or some sort of device. And of course it holds your remote. So definitely a good alternative to the Tesla OEM ones. Definitely better than actually the Tesla OEM ones. So I'll make sure I link that in the description below. Now moving on to the center console tray below the screen. So the center console tray below the screen, here's the one I have from Tesla. It still fits nicely and it slides a little bit, but doesn't slide as well. And you can definitely put two sunglasses in here. Now this is the Joe Wow one. This one is awesome. It even comes with a USB to USB-C adapter. And I love that little attention to detail that they provided. Because as you can see on the bottom here, there's actually two USB-C ports here. Now I love the Joe Wow one. It fits perfectly again. And let me show this real quick. It actually slides so much easier than the Tesla one. They have a rubber kind of silicone lining so you can always change this and swap this out. You could fit stuff in this little area. You could fit the two sunglasses. It fits just as well here. And overall, it's just so much nicer because I love how the cable can fit in here with it still fully closed. In a perfect place to hold your remote control. Boom. Anyways, I hope this video helped you and prepared you for driving a Tesla. If you guys are considering a Tesla, make sure you guys use my referral link for 1,000 free supercharger miles. And as always, I'll see you guys next week.